something funny about you. Donna! No, she's right. I can see how my behaviour could be interpreted as eccentric. Eccentric? Weird more like disappearing all the time. Turning up with some lame excuse about bra straps or gussets. Hey, all that's behind me now, so no more surprises, I promise. Sometimes a lady likes a surprise. <laughs> so, how many stepbrothers and sisters have I really got then? Well, to be honest, Donna, I haven't been counting. <laughs> hey, sorry. Just because I've taken you back, it doesn't mean to say you're out of the doghouse, Bob Hope. So no jokes, please. Well, I think it's really great you're staying. Really? She's the right misery when you're not around to cheer her up. Yeah, she's a wonderful kid. Too clever for her own good sometimes. You know, I can't tell you how much it means to me to be back in the bosom of my own true love. Oh, just make sure you stay there. I will. But from now on, my problems are your problems. What problems? I thought you dropped all your bombshells last night. Yeah, I did. Well, more or less. I don't think I like the sound of this. Well, I don't want to let you down, love. But this honeymoon... I can't even afford an overnight stop at Skipdale B&B. I don't need a honeymoon. We're together, and that's enough to be going on with. I am a lucky man. And don't you ever, ever forget it. Smoked salmon for breakfast? Today's a special occasion. Is it? In what way? Today you are sitting down to breakfast with your new productivity manager. Oh, yes, I am. You're having second thoughts? No, no, not at all. No, no, it's a perfect job for you. You'll be able to exploit your talent for gentle but deadly persuasion. I hope you're not implying I bamboozled you into giving me this post. Gloria, <laughs> I am a businessman. I wouldn't allow myself to be bamboozled if I didn't think it was economically sound. Good, because I've drawn up a contract of employment. Excellent. Hmm. Very thorough. And that's your salary, is it? We can discuss it if you wish. I know what a passion you have for negotiation. <laughs> so you'd be prepared to settle for less? I didn't say that. I'd best eat up. I don't want to be late on my first morning. We've still got time. Some of us have to cycle. I thought perhaps we'd go in together today. Tongues may wag. Right then. You and I... Uh, routine now. Yes. I suppose we are, aren't we? You're in very early this morning. Am I? I hope you haven't sent Ashley off without a good breakfast inside him. He can cook for himself, you know. You don't normally show your face till later. Not without good reason. Mum, what is this? You know there's more for us to do now that Alan's not around to help out. If you'd rather do all the work by yourself, just say the word. You've been pouring over those books since half past six this morning. Come on. Yeah, well, I need to revise. Well, going into the exam room, tired and hungry ain't going to help you, is it? Look. Come on, now eat. Grandad, what is it with you and cook breakfasts? If it moves, fry it. What's up? You got a problem? Well, that's my driving test come through. Oh. Did you hear that? Mark's got a test. Get the bacon on. He's had his bacon. Hey, why are you so cheerful? And you got an exam today? Uh, yeah, thanks, Mark. I hadn't forgotten. I'm sorry, Grandad, but I really haven't got time for this. Ollie! Oh, nice one, Mark. What? So when's this driving test? It's next month. Have you got bags of time? No, there isn't. Have you ever tried reversing round a corner? Oh, that's the story of my life. <sighs> Look, I'm going to need loads of extra lessons. Oh, well, this sounds like a job for a superwoman. Who? Your mother. She'll be back soon. Right. If Mohammed won't come to the breakfast... Mm. Grandad! Morning. Hi there, Carlos. You're very punctual today. You what? Ignore her, her needle's stuck in a groove. Did Nicola get off all right? Aye, she did, thanks. Big day for her. First day at college. Oh, so she's been telling me. Let's get on. What do you think he meant by that? By what? So she's been telling me. You don't think he's getting bored with her, do you? Of course not. Mum, Nicola can be called a lot of things, but boring's not one of them. So, you reckon they're still happy together? Absolutely. You only got to look at them to see that. Good. Now, if you've finished asking pointless questions, we need more mixers. Oh, 
Well, at least we know it's definitely not the drains. If you were half the man you make yourself out to be, we'd have sorted this problem by now. What's Bob's car still doing outside the shop? Was probably taking the day off. Understandable in the circumstances. No, Terry. Understandable would be Bob's worldly possessions littering up the pavement and Vivian screaming like a banshee. Here we go again. What on earth is she playing at? If he were my man, hell would freeze over before I had him back. She's weak, all right. And once again, it's up to me to do our dirty work for her. Hey, oh no, you don't. Look, it's none of your business. I'm her best friend. Betty Eggleton's a better friend to her than you are. You don't understand our relationship. I understand only too well. The moment that Viv gets a sniff of happiness, you start plotting to destroy it. That is so untrue. I am sick and tired of hearing your sanctimonious voice braying on about stuff you know now about. Don't talk to me like that. Well, you're lucky I'm talking to you at all. Bob's the best thing that's happened to Viv for years, and you know that, so stop behaving like a jealous schoolgirl. Terence, I would appreciate you not shouting at me in the street. Well, get inside and twitch your curtains. Where are you off to? I'm off to ask Bob if he fancies a pint at lunchtime. You'll go across that road. Don't even think about coming back. Yeah, yeah. Terry, still on for our run at lunchtime? Yeah, well, let's make it a long one. The further I get away from here, the better. Ashley, there I am. You're looking very well today. Thank you. Are you? Very well. Positively blew me. You and Bernice haven't had words. We've had loads. Oh. If you can't talk to your wife, who can you talk to? Oh, right. <laughs> I wish I'd handled the miscarriage situation better, but that's all behind us. Hopefully, once the bishop's rubber stamp to my holiday leave, we'll be off to Sorrento. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. I'm glad to hear you two are getting on so well. Of course, my mother's still an absolute dragon, but that's a cross I've learned to bear. You're looking for a slap. Come, Diane, you surely wouldn't strike a man at the cloth. It wouldn't be the first time. Hi, Ollie, how's it going? Don't ask. You're off already, I'll give you a lift if you like. No, I'd rather get the boss, it'll give me time to think. Good luck, eh? I'll need it. I hope she's not overdoing it. I don't reckon she got a wink of sleep last night. Makes two of us. But she needs a break. You know, it's ages since you had a night out. Look, why don't I treat us to a meal at the wool park tonight? Sounds good to me. Oh, at last. What are you doing this afternoon? Sleeping. Why? His driving test come through. Yes, next month. As much practice as I can get. Sorry, Mark. I'm dead on my feet. Why don't you ask your dad? Why well, don't you do that? Well, he is a all, yeah. He does not think it's all about driving. Yeah, so do you. Yeah, well. Didn't you say you were lending a hand at the garage today? Mm, yeah, so I am. Sorry, Mark. Oh, great. You two are really helpful. Thanks for listening last night. I like listening. Maybe I'm getting senile before my time, but I know, Bernice. I know when something's amiss. Yeah, well, it's easy to overreact when your kids are concerned. I mean, the other day, Victoria was acting really strangely, you know, secretive. And I knew she was up to something, but couldn't work it out. Do you know what it was? Boyfriend trouble? <sighs> no, she was drawing me a picture. She just didn't want me to see it till it was finished. Maybe you're right. Innocent till proven guilty, eh? You'll have the wrong bloke to ask about that. Sorry. I've got to go. Work to do. Stay for lunch. Go on. You're good for me. You temper my wild imaginings. It's beef stew with dumplings. Well, in that case, how can I resist? Grab a table. I'll bring it over. These are for table six. Oh, you prepare everything so beautifully. I'm good with my hands. All right, Mum. Jack's stopping for his lunch. Oh, we're going to Carlos. No, I'll tell him. Three. Didn't realise there were that many. Four counting Viv, although thankfully she's for keeps. Well, what were you playing at? I mean, loads of blokes have got ex-wives. It's not a hanging offence. Well, you're right, I can see that now. But Viv means so much to me. I didn't want anything to jeopardise what we've got. Didn't want to hurt her. Oh. So seeing your ex is behind the back, were well, your way not hurting her? I know I've been a fool. Terrible thing about deception. You tell yourself you're in control. You're doing just what you need to do to be expedient. Before you know it, everything spirals out of control. Lying becomes a way of life. You become ashamed of the truth without really understanding why. Yeah, well, I'm glad it's out in the open. 
So am I, mate. Last night I had the first decent night's sleep in ages. With the woman I adore lying beside me. Now how many men can claim that? No, oh, shut up. You make me jealous. You've got Carol. Aye. Haven't adjust. She walked right past me without so much as a good morning, Betty. Perhaps she didn't see you. No, oh, she saw me all right. So what do you expect? You need your job. Yeah. Nevertheless, good manners cost now. I know I shouldn't speak ill of the sacked, but this place is a lot more fun without Edna glaring across at us. <laughs> I've done 73 number plates today. Oh, give the boy a medal. He's a good worker, is our Sam. How many have you done, Betty? I know. About half a dozen bit, looks of it. Yes, well, some of us go more for detail. It's gone one o'clock, you know. You see, that's why Pollard made her manager. She can tell time. <laughs> <laughs> and I bet you can tie her on shoelaces, don't you? <laughs> I know you're all enjoying yourselves. Oh, is that what we're doing, is it? But this is your designated lunch break, isn't that right, Cynthia? I, I can't argue with that. Come on, girls, all out. I'll just finish this one. No, you won't. Still here, Betty. <laughs> For Miss Innes. <laughs> you know what we were talking about earlier? Well, what's that saying about just because you're paranoid? What? Nothing. Did you want something? Just thought I'd let you know the special's still on. Are you trying to get me into trouble? Now, there's an idea. Actually, I wasn't expecting you. I'm trying to track down my running mate. Oh, right. You OK? Mm. It's a bit of a head. Maybe you should take the afternoon off. Pop home for a rest. Oh, I don't want to disturb you. I won't be there. You'll have the place to yourself. Really? You have to be nice to yourself. <laughs> hey, Ashley. Come to drag me away from your orange juice. Afraid so. Hey, you two are taking this jogging out very seriously. Join us if you like. And no thanks. My running days are over. <laughs> Where did Bernice go? Oh, she's in the back. Bernice? Where are you going? Oh, I'm feeling a bit under the weather. Ashley suggested I go home. We're a bit snowed under. You and Jason can cope, can't you? She's been dying to get mummy on for ages. You look all right to me. Mother, what's wrong with you? I'll see you later. I'll be fine when I've had a lay down. Still in Darlington. Oh, you've stopped for your lunch, haven't you? No, mate, you are entitled to nothing if you can't keep on schedule. Dad. Mark, great to see you. Are you busy? You wouldn't believe. We've got all our trucks out today. I seem to be the only person round here prepared to do any work. All oh, right. What? Oh, nothing. It's just an idea I had. At least try me. Well, Mum thought you might be able to give me a driving lesson. What now? Uh, preferably. <sighs> Look. I really am up to my eyes. I need to uh, Look, wait. Everyone else is skiving today. Why shouldn't I? Oh, someone's been busy. Just thought I'd brighten the place up a bit. You're trying to say you're not happy with our work rate? Right? Well, we can all benefit from a little extra inspiration. Hey! I don't think I appreciate being like and do a sheep. You're more of a goat, aren't you, Betty? Hey, that one looks like your Sam. <laughs> Can't we have some pigs? I like pigs. Just get back to work. Ooh. What's going on? Ask your missus. You're certainly taking on your new responsibility seriously. 
Do you approve? Well, I can think of other ways of squandering our profits. Nothing's being squandered, Eric. It's a proven fact that reinforcing a sense of team spirit increases productivity. Oh, I suppose. As long as you know what you're doing, eh? Now, I need your advice on appointing a foreman. Do we really need one? Undoubtedly. Well, you're busy with your antiques. I'm up to my eyes in admin. It's very important your workforce don't feel they're being left to their own devices. But I can't afford to take on any more staff. You'd have to. Make an internal promotion. From that rabble? It'll do wonders for morale. Not exactly spoiled for choice, are we? I suggest we pick the person who works the hardest. It's important to lead by example. Yeah, oh, that's true. We're agreed then. Oh. I'll collect the production figures tonight and you can make an announcement in the morning. Ah, oh. how did I ever cope without you? I'm not just a pretty face, you know. How did Bernice seem to you today? How do you mean? Well, it's not like her to slope off at the first sign of headache. Mm. Well, women are a mystery to me, Dan. Anyone take us for lunch? Nah, don't like it. Right, I'm off. Why are you in such a hurry? Well, I said I'd meet a mate this afternoon. Well, what if someone comes in wanting a late dinner? Well, I'm entitled to me time off, Diane. I can rustle up an omelette in a time of crisis. Now, there you go. See you later. <laughs> and then there was two. Actually, there's things I need to do this afternoon. Hey, I can't run this place single-handed. Not on my wages. I won't be gone long. An hour at the most. Well, as long as we can discuss my bonus when you get back. Good lad. <laughs> it's nice to know there's someone I can trust. Well, hang on. You can't go yet. You can leave me here on my own. I want to grab some lunch first. You've got ten minutes. Oh, didn't think it'd get this bad. Oh, can't it gloat, have you? Of course not. Then what are you here for? I just came to say thank you for your support yesterday. Well, an apology might be more in order. Sending me away like that after all I've tried to do for you. Well, me and Bob needed a bit more time to talk things through together. When will you learn? Whenever you try and talk to fellas, you let them pull the wool over your eyes. I've told you what he was like. Bigamy is a criminal offence, Vivian. My Bob is not a bigamist. Oh, and you know that for certain, do you? Yes! How? He told me. And I met his sister-in-law, the young one. It was all a terrible misunderstanding. He's been lying to you from the moment you first met. No, he's been economical with the truth. There is a difference. Oh, for pity's sake, Vivian, how stupid can you get? When are you going to see the damage you're doing to yourself? Damage? That's more your department, that is. You're always trying to drive a wedge between me and my men. That is nonsense. We even tried to get off with Vic on our wedding day. Oh, don't start all that again. I do not need your cast-offs. That's what makes it worse. The only reason you do it is petty spite. As soon as I want something, you decide you're going to have it instead. Like this place. The only reason you're running the B&B is because you knew I wanted it. Be honest, Viv. You're hardly landlady material. Running a place like this requires a degree of taste and discernment. Oh, don't come all la -di da with me, Carol Waring. I remember you when you were anybody's for a bag of scratchings. And come to think of it, you still are. I beg your pardon? Your old fur coat and no knickers and even the fur coat's imitation. Get out. That's why you've got Terry, who just about tolerates you. And I've got my bob and a ring on my finger. I said, get out. Pleasure. Oh, by the way, the stench in here. I'd check your permit if I was you. Smells like rotten prawns to me. What? You. Careful, Carol. You might forget you're a lady. You. <laughs> Does anyone see you? Like who? My mother's been acting very strangely today. She's a very strange woman. We have to be careful. I know. You mustn't take any needless risks. Upstairs. Are you sure? Just do it. At last. I'm doing you a favour, remember? Oh, sorry. Good lad. Oh, a hot sweaty man. You've not seen anything yet. Two very large pints in East Payne. I'm not sure about that. Eh, loser always pays. You should have challenged <laughs> me to a race. I ought to get back to Benice. Well, you took two minutes off your time. Oh, sounds like a cause for celebration <laughs> to me. Another time, maybe. Hey, Diane. Talk some sense to your son-in-law here, will you? What? Look, I really must get home. Benice is under the weather. She needs looking after. No, I'll do it. In fact, I was just on my way over. 
<laughs> That's very kind of you, but... Really, I insist. She doesn't want you sweating and wheezing all over her. Well, I don't know. What you need is a long, cool drink. And my sentiments entirely. Well, I must admit, a pint of best would go down rather nicely. Oh, well, that's settled then. <laughs> you better take my keys. Tell her I won't be long. No, take your time. Uh, that's two pints coming up. Oh, and uh, bung us a menu, will you? Oh, food's off of bread. You're really coming along. <laughs> you expected me to end up in a ditch, did you? Mark, mate, I am giving you encouragement. You'll sail through your test. I won't. Trust me, I can tell. You know what to do, it's just having the confidence to do it. Look, thanks for helping me out. What are dads for? You tell me. So, how are things at home? Fine, yeah, Grandad's still lord of the kitchen. <laughs> How's Ollie getting on? Yeah, she's just panicking about exams. Cool, making your life a living hell, eh? No, she's working really hard. I think she's learnt from my mistakes. And your mum? Yeah, she's good. Things are good. Glad to hear it. Doesn't mean they couldn't be better. I'm just happy we're talking to each other. Yeah, me too. Bernice, are you up here? 